It moves at just under one kilometer an hour. And that gentle, unhurried pace is all part of the experience. <laughs> So welcome to Batman's Hill Drive. <laughs> Funny. And that seems to be Docklands Park, so we are going to pass that one. Hmm. Wonder what they sell here. We are in the Docklands. Uh, the map says this should be, or maybe it is, not this one, but this should be Marvel Stadium. Marvel Stadium, I don't know. To the left, we have some water. Nice. Nice touch, Melbourne. Oh, the place is called Victoria Point. And the weather turned nice. That's good because we are trying the Ferris wheel. So hopefully it stays nice. It's only like two minutes between the rain and sunshine now, so not really that fun actually. Ah, uh, this is what I'm talking about. Sunshine, nice weather, water. Some pine trees, whatever they're called. Cool stuff, really cool stuff. Now, this is scenery and sunshine, really good stuff. And I think we have the. Oh, there it is. And Annika is dressed like an Eskimo. So, no mistaking, this is the Marvel Stadium. So it's, it's September now in 2019 and I'm guessing the, that this place is packed in the high season. Now you can actually move freely. There's not a lot of people. It's just nice, nice scenery. Good stuff. Have Falminator, don't kill it. So that's one of our our main attractions today. The Ferris wheel. I will link it below so you can find it. Looks uh, like something I don't like to do, but Annika likes to do it and uh, you know. One more half dead shopping center. And of course we are dressed for success. Outfit with the latest style of uh, casual clothing. White trash. This is, <laughs> this is uh, a mix of colors. <laughs> this is the more Melbourne Star uh, Ferris wheel. Uh, it takes 30 minutes to complete. And um, they are saying that it, it, it will show a lot of stuff that you don't see. Otherwise, uh, these guys don't really know that we have a drone, but you know, not everyone has a drone. So, let's enjoy the view and uh, take you for the ride. Uh, oh, wow, yeah, uh, it's 80, uh, it's 40, 40 Australian dollars per person. Uh, that includes one of these. Or other bears, I will show you. One of these sparkling stuff. So I don't really think it's a bad deal. If you book it online, I saw it was 30, I think 32. You know, it opened in 1978 and it served as a vital link to Melbourne's rapidly growing west ever since. 
Can you imagine Melbourne without it? But prior to the originally scheduled opening, a major stand of the bridge collapsed. Oh, by the way, um, we can rec recommend actually doing this at low season because one of these carts, if you want to go alone, is 320, I think, or 400 uh, Australian dollars if you want to have it for yourself. But as you can see, we don't really have a crowd in here. If you don't count Annika as a crowd, and I don't. <laughs> so maybe you, you know got this already, but if you don't like heights, uh, this is nothing for you. Nothing. It was like high. <laughs> I think Melbourne has a really good, if, if you can call a skyline good, uh, skyline. Um, it's pretty pleasant. A lot of, uh, you know, they have a lot of sun, so they use a lot of uh, reflective materials for the windows. And it uh, looks quite cool. Nice, the bridge. Only the bridge, it's quite a large bridge. An even larger one, dogs, sunshine. And uh, the best part of this is actually for me being, being warm. If you trace your eye along the city and freeway below us, you can get a good view of the gateway to the city, the enormous sculptural yellow coal that marks the entrance to the city proper. Colloquially known as the cheese stick, it's a handy point of reference. Beyond it to the north, the tall marine freeway snaps its way to Melbourne Airport. Continue further in that direction, an hour and a half or so in a car, and you'll find yourself in what used to be Victoria's gold fields. Many of the towns north and northwest of Melbourne were kick-started by the wealth that was discovered in that region. Many of them boast impressive boom-style Victorian architecture and today are full of cafes, restaurants, and galleries. Perfect for a day trip. Closer to the north, a little to the left of the cheese stick, lies Melbourne's famous Flemington Racehorse, home to the Melbourne Cup Carnival, and in particular, the Melbourne Cup, one of the world's richest and most famous horse races. As you probably know, the Cup is the only horse race in the world responsible for a public holiday. Attendances at all of the major swim racing events are enormous. It's quite common for three or four of the major races to attract more than 100,000 punters and party goers to each event. So we're not done yet, but I would say that we recommend this thing. It's not that bad. There's no shaking due to wind. Uh, maybe it's windy today. Um, this is a one kilometer an hour ride, so it's smooth. Runs on some kind of uh, gyro, whatever it is. And um, you know, just come for the ride, enjoy. Sorry for no, <laughs> not knowing where west is, but I think west is that way, right? When the sun goes down. And um, oh, by the way, let's see. And we are on the bottom of Australia, so that should be west actually, yes. So, but you can see those mountains that made Australia rich. So this is how malls around the world dies. And, uh, oh, by the way, if you say no to the pictures, this, they are starting to push other things like free ride next time blah 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 you know if you've done this this thing once I would say it's enough for your safety Please remember to hold down the corner. It's five minutes. It's only yeah. it's only it's a... So we have managed to get right before the bad weather was coming. Uh, I don't know if that is a good thing because now we need to walk back and it's called as hell. 
So now it's like that part. It's a um, park. <laughs> Nothing else. People are exercising. Sometimes. So tonight it's um, Mexican.